I'm Jay Burney, the U.S. Chair of Birds on the Niagara 2021. Welcome to our meet and greet. This is going to be a fun night where you can uh, meet uh, some of our presenters, some of our partners, and learn a little bit about what we do and why we do it, and a little bit about our programs. We're also uh, hosting a silent auction, and we'll talk to you about that during this meet and greet tonight. We we'll hope you go bid on it. Uh, it's a virtual event this year. You can see their presentations on our website and on Facebook, uh, not only when they're scheduled, but they'll be archived indefinitely on the schedule page, so you can always go back. Listen, it is virtual. Uh, we can't even go across the border, so we're waving to each other, literally, uh, in some cases, and talking to each other virtually, and it's wonderful that we can do that. Um, you can go outside. It's a great time to go outside. Winter is a fabulous time in the Niagara River corridor. There's so many beautiful birds out there on the river. There's waterfowl and breeding plumage. There's tundra swans. There's lots of gulls. Remember, though, uh, practice uh, safe distancing, social distancing. Um, wear your mask. Uh, be safe. Be aware of the weather conditions always but go out and have a good time. There's so many places to look at this stuff. So let's get this party started. Hey, uh, we're just jumping into this party and we've got a lot of people here tonight. Uh, the first thing I wanna uh, introduce to everyone is uh, Lauren Macanieco of Buffalo Audubon. Uh, she's been putting together our um, silent auction. And Lauren, uh, let me turn it over to you and you can tell us about the auction. Great. Okay, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about it and then I'll share my screen so you can learn and see what the auction is all about. Um, the auction is a new thing this year. It's uh, developed in a lot of really great organizations and people and businesses have donated to this auction and you can bid on really kind of exclusive opportunities um, that most people aren't able to do during the regular year. So I'm going to share my screen and show you what it looks like. Um, making sure the screen is shared. Just give me a nod, someone. All right, so Birds on the Niagara, silent auction. Uh, we have books by some of our keynote speakers. We have signed copies, hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be signed um, with uh, Dr. Drew Lanham and Timothy Beatley, who will be giving really great talks this weekend. I can't wait to watch them. Um, we also have the Street Life of Trees, and we'll be having somebody from the Arboretum at Buffalo State College talking about those. We have some cool Buffalo Audubon things, some games that were donated by Heart of the Game in, in uh, South Buffalo. Wild Birds of um, Unlimited of Amherst has given us some really cool feeder package. So many experiences with guides. We have several people in this discussion that are um, lending their expertise for guides for birding hikes, for fly fishing excursions. We have a, an exclusive wildlife meet and greet, um, kayaking with New York State Parks. We have a bog walk with a professor at Damon College. Um, some of these people you might recognize already, people have been bidding. We have really great adventures and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, an attraction pass booklet for two people with Niagara Parks in Canada. This is an item, if the border was open right now, I would be bidding on it in a heartbeat. It is filled with stuff. Um, two nights stayed at Beaver Meadow, which is Buffalo Audubon's preserve, Roy Croft gift certificate, and we have some really great art as well. Um, a decoy, a loon decoy, some stamp um, artwork, and also a framed beaver pond image by Robert Bateman, who is a very famous wildlife artist from Canada. Uh, I'll tell you more in a little bit, but this is some really great stuff that you can bid on and become familiar with. I'll click on one so you can see what it looks like. If you click on the item, you can see some other images. So you're like, I'm not sure exactly what that item is. You can look at some images, pick up other images of this meat wildlife up close. You can get really in there. There's a beautiful kestrel, um, American kestrel. This is Jiminy Crockett. He's a talking crow. And there's a actually a link to his website right in the description here and you can set your maximum bid amount. So that's what you're willing to spend on the item. And then you don't have to go back. And if you win it, you win it. If you wanna keep checking on it, you can up your maximum bid to ensure that you win it. And I think that you get notifications through Better World if you are outbid with your maximum bid. So all of those things are located right on the website, um, birds on the, birds on the Niagara.org. 
and uh, you can check it out yourself or on the Facebook page as well. And that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. And that was really great. And you know, there's some great stuff on that at that auction. And it is on the homepage of our website. It's on all our Facebook pages. Uh, speaking about some of the uh, things, this is the Timothy Beatley book, and I just got a, a bunch of them today for the auction, and he's inscribed them. I don't know if you can read that, but it says, uh, Timothy Beatley, uh, February 14th, 2021. That's Valentine's Day. Birds in the Niagara, 2021. So bid on these books because, you know, this is a collectible for sure. And we've got a lot of those in our auction tonight. So um, that said, um, I'd like to uh, just talk to some of the other folks that are here tonight. Ed, um, I, I'd like to go to you next. Ed Shuriano, Buffalo Audubon, um, you know, you've been, uh, Audubon has been one of the two anchors uh, for this Birds on Niagara since we started. Of course, it started when Melissa Fratello was the executive director and you've taken over and it's been really wonderful. And um, Tell us about Buffalo Audubon and, and what this festival means to you guys. Well, thanks, Jay. I, I really um, am honored to be uh, asked to be the executive director. And it's been in just a few short months um, to work with such really tremendously talented colleagues over at Buffalo Audubon. We have um, an incredible facility with over a thousand acres at seven different preserves here in Western New York. Um, but this specific event, Birds on the Niagara, is really special to us because it's bringing together our friends from Canada, a lot of our partners around Western New York, all concerned with doing what Buffalo Audubon believes is uh, taking care of birds in the places they need. Um, while I'm not an expert in any of, of that, I'd love you to hear from some of my colleagues. You, you've heard from Lauren, but uh, maybe we should hear from Tom, um, Tom Purr. Tom is an, is an extraordinary birder. I've had the chance to be out with him on several occasions, most recently up in the, the Niagara Falls area, uh, birding for gulls. Um, that's what the primary uh, event is all about here is the gulls on the Niagara. So I'd be glad to uh, turn the mic over and have Tom spend a little time talking about his experiences up there on the Niagara. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, talking. Ed. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, Niagara Falls is such a great place for birding um, in the winter, mostly. We have, you know, 18 species of gulls that you could, that have been seen in the Niagara River. On a good day, you could see um, maybe up, up to 10 at Niagara Falls. So my presentation, uh, my program for the Birds in the Niagara Festival will be highlighting that and talking about the different uh, the different goals you can see what to be prepared for how to how to be prepared and what to look for when you're going out there to look for the birds um I, I grew up you know right by the niagara river in tonawanda so this is this is my you know my home um it's an international festival which is exciting but you know uh this last year we had people coming from as far as toronto to this festival uh, to come on our birding tours uh, but this year it's all virtual, so you know people could come from anywhere, uh, can, could participate from anywhere in the world with this. So hopefully, you know, this is a good event to showcase our home where we live, the birds that we have right here and that we love, and you know, just just share about you know what's great about living here. Thank you, Tom. You know, I, I've heard uh, we have some people that are actually going to be visiting us from Singapore. Um, and that's, you know, so we got an opportunity here to do a, a big reach. Uh, we're a globally significant, important bird area, Ramsar area, incredible biodiversity area. And we have globally uh, significant um, birds here and biodiversity. And so it, we are trying to address a huge marketplace, a global marketplace with our local place. Uh, so, um, You've also uh, doing a, a owl prowl, Tom, I believe on Friday night with Chuck Rosenberg, which will be a lot of fun. You guys are always successful. And um, I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. So if you look at our schedule, you'll see Tom's program um, and uh, with the Audubon and then the owl prowl on Friday night. Um, I'd like to jump over to uh, our Canadian uh, co-partners and um, the co-chair over there is with us tonight and that's uh, Marcy. Um, Marcy, why don't you uh, 
say hi to us and tell us what's going on in Canada. You've got a lot of great media lately and you've done a lot of work. You and Carrie Kennedy have done so much work for us. And so what's going on in Canada? We can't get over there. We can wave to you across the river, but you know, we miss Canada. We miss you guys too, so much. Um, I guess the highlight this week was all the canvas backs in the river uh, close to the Canadian shore. So I think uh, we estimated 10,000 canvas backs. So it was quite the amazing uh, show. And I actually got to see cording canvas backs, which you don't often see um, this time of year. So that was really interesting, except for there were five males trying their best and one female was sleeping through the whole thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been birding along the Niagara River for about 30 years. So, you know, there's always something new and interesting to see. And uh, it's, this has been a wonderful partnership. So we're so grateful to be included in this uh, event and uh, be able to participate fully. We've got some great speakers um, that are uh, from the Canadian side that, that are gonna be joining the program. And we've got some contests and yeah, we're just really excited. I'm, I'm really happy to be able to talk about uh, one of my pet projects, which I'm, I'm president of Community Voices of Fort Erie. And so I'll get to speak about a, um, an area that we're trying to save from development right on the Niagara River, uh, just across from Buffalo called uh, uh, Waverly Woods. It's also known as Erie Beach. So yeah, really, just really excited about the whole program and how it's gonna all play out. It's, uh, it's really nice that you're uh, able to talk about Waverly Beach. It's a really important one of our programs. And, um, you know, I, I introduced you and I, I talked a little bit about a, a, a similar area on, on the US side, Buffalo Art of Harbor. And we've got a lot of uh, stressful issues out there about development, just like you have at Waverly Woods, Waverly Beach. Erie Beach. Um, the thing that's really interesting, besides the incredible natural area that Waverly is, and it's under threat, and Marcy gives a great talk about it, uh, it's also a historic place. And the history of that place is so incredible. I mean, there's Native American history, there was War of 1812 history, there was an incredible, bloody series of battles that happened in that area. And this is Black History Month. And we have a great uh, social justice speaker, Drew Landham, who's going to be talking about uh, coloring the conservation conversation. And he talks about being an African-American man in the conservation movement as a birder. And Waverly was where the Niagara movement was founded. And the Niagara movement, as you may or may not know, turned into the NAACP, uh, a, a big uh, African-American movement in, in the country and in the world. And so this is a really historic place. Tune into Marcy's talk and you'll learn a lot about it. And um, you'll want to say that um, for the birds and for the history. Uh, Marcy, who else do we have here from Canada? I can see that we have uh, um, Lynn, and uh, I guess we lost one of our speakers. And oh, I'm Roger, here. Um, why, don't you, why don't you introduce uh, these folks and um, let's hear about them. Okay, well, uh, let's start with Lynn Freeman, who is the president of Ontario Field Ornithologist and has been a, the person that really got the two speakers that we're providing for the program. So turn it over to Lynn. Hi everyone. So uh, I'm Lynn, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm president of Ontario Field Ornithologists, which is quite a mouthful to say. So OFO for short. Um, so our organization, this is our first time participating in this festival. And we're just really, really honored to be included in um, promoting uh, the Niagara River and the area as a fantastic birding destination destination. So OFO, we've been around for over 30 years and um, our organization supports birders in the field, field ornithologists. We um, have worked on conservation issues. We have publications that go out with uh, to teach people about birds. We also have an original research program. So scientists uh, will publish in our journal, Ontario Birds, three times a year, original studies um, that aren't published anywhere else. And um, We've been promoting great birding areas around Ontario since our inception. So one of our biggest uh, weekends is our annual gull weekend, which we have the first weekend in December every year where we've been promoting the fantastic gull watching 
opportunities in the Niagara area. So that's why the Niagara, Niagara Falls, Niagara River area is such a special place in parts of Ontario Birders, and we're just thrilled to be involved. There's another reason though why the Niagara River area is especially um, important to Ontario's birders, and that's because it's among the few outposts of more southerly species, which you can't really see very many other places in Ontario. So I'm thinking of birds such about birds such as tufted titmice. Um, there's um, now fish crows that are coming up, black vultures. So the whole area is a really amazing ecosystem because we meet get the, the meeting of the south and the north. And the Niagara River is just such a fantastic place for gulls and other water birds and still has a lot of natural areas, which the program is highlighting. So we're, we're very proud to be able to be part of this. And uh, congratulations to everybody who's involved in, in bringing this area forward. You can't hear me. Okay, that's why, sorry. Um, I said black vultures. Wow, we've seen a lot of them. That's pretty recently, so that's pretty cool. So thanks, Lynn, for talking about them. Uh, They're pretty uh, rare in Ontario, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a couple of other uh, Canada folks here um, we're going to get to in just a moment. Um, I want to remind you that if either Tim Beatley or Drew Lanham joins, I might uh, jump right to them because I don't know how long they can stay, but I'm going to get to everyone here tonight. If anyone has to leave early, now we're probably going to be going at, at least another 40 minutes. Um, if anybody's going to leave early, let me know. But I want to talk uh, a little bit more right now um, about our Canadian partners. We have uh, Don from the Burt Miller Nature Club, and then after that, Bob from the uh, Peninsula Field Naturalist. And so, um, Don, why don't you start and tell us, um, you know, what you guys do and, and why you're here with us, and thank you for being here with us, by the way. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, this is my first time participating in anything like this, so I'm a real newbie at it. However, I have been involved with the Burt Miller Nature Club now for quite a few years, um, so I'm representing them here tonight. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about our club. Um, you likely know that the town of Fort Erie um, is just across the border, but did you know that the town of Fort Erie is made up of four other communities? And these communities include Ridgeway, Crystal Beach, Stevensville, and Crescent Park. Um, our nature club normally meets um, every month from September until June at the Fort Erie Conservation Club in Stevensville. Um, that's part of the Fort Erie community. And we have uh, socials and guest speakers um, during those times. We have nature outings and one of our big ones is a walk on the wild side, which we had to cancel this year that involved uh, actually going out down to the old fort and uh, touring along the river to look at all the fabulous birds there in the month of January or February. Um, some of the history of our club involved uh, how it was formed. Uh, Earl Plato um, invited the community to uh, a meeting at the library and eventually formed the club in 1995 um, and named it the Burt Miller Nature Club. And people often wondered, well, why Burt Miller Nature Club? Well, he was named after Albert Weatherstone Miller who was a naturalist and an amateur biologist, as well as a mentor and friend of Earl's. Um, Bird had many accomplishments and I was surprised to learn that he belonged to the Niagara Falls Nature Club. Um, he helped start the Peninsula Field Naturalists and he started the Fort Erie Horticultural Society. So um, they, uh, he has actually um, an arboretum in his name, that's at Balls Falls. I'd like to go and visit that sometime. If you don't know where Balls Falls is, that's in Vineland. Uh, the Burt Miller Nature Club is really proud to carry on his name and his legacy. But the main reason that uh, the club was formed was to help protect, try to uh, preserve Marcy Woods. Uh, Marcy's Woods is an intact Carolinian sandhill forest lying at the eastern end of Lake Erie. Um, on the Point Avenue Peninsula. The whole story can be um, found in this book called Niagara Birds. Can you see that? Written by, written by K.O. Roy and John Black. 
This book is available at Brock University in digital format if anybody wants to look into it. It's a fabulous book about the history of all the clubs in the area, as well as the important birds and where they're found. Uh, our club has uh, really accumulated quite a list of accomplishments. Uh, both the ones that I have listed here are, um, we were able to do in partnerships with various agencies and ministries. Um, there were studies and restorations and inventories. Um, we have the town of Fort Erie included as a partner with the club in the stewardship of Shag Park Nature Park. Um, we partnered with a few people to do the study of the grass pickerel population in Beaver Creek. Uh, and we've been doing some dune restoration over the past few years. Um, Another partnership that we formed was with our local library and it's called Nature in Niagara. And every year we have a community outreach where we provide programs such as information on butterflies and kinds of gardens you can plant to, to invite pollinators into your yard and so on. Um, for many years, we did public outreach at the two day Ridgeway Summer Festival. Um, we had a large display uh, and many educational activities and a reptile and amphibian component as well. And for three, for three years after that, we decided to operate a butterfly festival at the conservation area with the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority and the Fort Erie Conservation Club. Heartland Forest Winter Festival is another one that we attended and that's another outreach. So our, our main purpose now is really for outreach and, and education in, within the community. Um, the Burt Miller Nature Club completed a three year study of the Lake Erie, the North Shore of Lake Erie coast. And its aim was to do the inventory of shoreline plants and to protect and restore some of the local shoreline with beach grass plantings and boardwalks that we actually had the um, local secondary school students build. Um, a Lake Erie Dune Restoration brochure uh, was produced from that and it uh, is a beautiful colorful brochure that shows um, all the different kinds of areas along the beach from Fort Erie all the way up to Dunville. Um, Something that one of our members is passionate about is tracking Fowler's toads, which many of you probably know that's only found along the north edge of, of uh, Lake Erie from Fort Erie up to Dunville. Um, some other projects the club has been involved in include uh, conducting studies such as the old growth study, old growth forest study by uh, Bruce Kirshner. Has, has anybody heard his name before? Yes. And so um, that was one that we are quite proud of. And, and uh, currently we are still doing the chimney swift monitoring in Fort Erie. We have a chimney swift um, colony that uh, loves to go down a, uh, an abandoned church uh, chimney right in downtown Fort Erie. Uh, we have a chimney swift, a man-made chimney swift tower out at our Shagbark Nature Park. Unfortunately, uh, it's never been occupied <laughs> and it's been there for quite a few years now. So these stories uh, and more can be found on our website if you're interested and um, quite easy to get to. It's the BurtMillerNatureClub.org and uh, you can check us out there. And that's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> hey, Don, thank you. Um, you. You can find uh, your website on our website. We have a link. We have your logo. Um, and I love your logo. I, I, you kind of share that with the Ontario field uh, ornithologist. It's the Pileated Woodpecker, which is awesome. Um, and I was wondering if the Birds of Niagara, if we can find a link to the Brock University digital version on your website. Is that possible? Uh, it is not on there, but I went ahead and checked it out myself. And you just have to put in Brock University, uh, Birds Niagara, John Black, and it will come up. And the link is right there, but we don't have it. As far okay. as I know, we do not have it on our website. Okay, well, maybe we can find some way to get it on our website, too, because it's a really neat book. And Kale, uh, I, I know Kale is just a wonderful, uh, wonderful book. 
Um, listen, well, I wanna, I, the, I, the, I wealth of, the wealth of historical information here about all the local um, nature clubs is really great. And uh, when you look into it and see all the historical pictures and how all the clubs were formed and all the nature activities in the area, it's, it's a wonderful book. And I'm even in here because we had, <laughs> we had solid owls nest in our duck boxes and got pictures of them. So thank you, Don. I noticed that Carrie Kennedy has joined us and I'd like to get to Carrie, but I, I, Bob Hycock um, of the Peninsula Field Naturalist is actually next in line. So if you don't mind, Carrie, I'd like to give you a chance, but I'd like to let Bob talk. He's been sitting in line here for a bit and we've been waiting for you, Carrie. We've been talking about you. We've all been saying good things, but so anyway, <laughs> Bob, why don't you tell us about the uh, Peninsula, Peninsula Field Naturalist? Sure, of course. Thanks, Jay. I'm, I'm pleased to be here tonight. Thanks for having us. And uh, we're pleased to be um, uh, working with the, the Birds of Niagara event again. We joined in last year and hung out at the Niagara Glen. And we really enjoyed that. My wife and I, you know, representing the PFN. Um, so the P I'm, a, I'm the president of the Peninsula Field Naturalist. And it was a club formed in 1954. So it's the oldest nature club in Niagara. And uh, we uh, organize the Christmas bird count uh, annually. And uh, not only do we organize it myself uh, and my wife, Jean Hampson, we're the co-compilers for that count uh, for the last few years now. Um, the Peninsula Field Naturalists, we work with other, several groups uh, in the Niagara region. Um, to, and together we advocate, educate and participate uh, in the conservation of natural resources and green spaces in the Niagara region and elsewhere. And some of those uh, activities Don mentioned when she was speaking, like the Winter Fest, uh, the Butterfly Festival, we've helped out with that. The Conservation Authority, when they had Water Fest, we participated in that. So we, we, we enjoyed that. And our other members of the boards and members that participated in those festivals, they, they did too. We had a great time at Winter Fest. Unfortunately, I couldn't join that because I, I was on vacation at that time. But uh, Roman and Rick Young from the PFN, they had they represented the PFN very well and had activities for the kids there when we participated in the Winterfest. So we have meetings and outings throughout the year. Um, of course, we're all taking uh, advantage of Zoom now. We started our Zoom meetings in September of last year. And uh, we have some great speakers lined up for the remaining uh, sessions of our winter. Uh, we got one coming up in February called Come Walk With Us. Uh, Sonia Richmond, her, her and her partner uh, have been, Sean, I believe his name is, have been walking across Canada. So we're looking forward to have them speak to us on February 22nd. And then normally we have a potluck in April. And that's just for members to bring their own dishes and we gather. And of course we can't do that. So we've just lined up another speaker. We just took advantage of that. And, you know, there's a pandemic, but why don't we just have another meeting? So we're looking forward to that. So um, in addition, oh, and we're talking about the Niagara River. Well, the, it's important. It's a, the Niagara River corridor IBA. It's, it's an important bird area. And Jean Hampson and my, my wife and myself were the caretakers of the Niagara River corridor IBA. So we help round up uh, birders from across the region. We even get one come down from Toronto to help us count the, the gulls and waterfall along the river from Fort Erie to Niagara on the Lake. That's what, 55 kilometers. And we get that, what a number of birders for covering sections that we've split up uh, along the river. So we enjoy that. We had two counts for this season, November and December, but uh, we had to cancel the January count due to the uh, government guidelines that were in place at the time we had scheduled the count. But um, there's, we're looking forward to the next season. And what we do, we just round up people and we have, we set up an eBird account too. So the, it's known as the Niagara quarter IBA account on eBird. So we, everybody shares their data from their eBird accounts. And then I just accept it and put it into the um, Niagara River quarter IBA account. So we have a great time doing that. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's, you know, we're so happy that you're partners. We love the work you've been doing and, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. And being oh, sure. Um, I noticed that we have another guest that just logged on, Tim Beatley, and I don't know oh. if you have a few minutes or not, but um, Carrie was actually next in line, but if you only have a few minutes, I'll... I'll... Oh, go go right ahead. I'm, okay. I'll just, I'm, I'm here to hang I, out. I can wait too, no, no problem. No, I'm fine. I'm, I'm in no hurry. 
So, We've been waiting for Carrie too, because she's the, uh, one of the Canada co-chairs along with Marcy. And so she's one of my co-chairs. Uh, I'm the U.S. co-chair. So Carrie, um, you've had a, a really important and awesome amount of work you've been doing for this festival this year. And uh, it's, tell us a, a little bit about who you are and what you've been doing and, and, um, and you know, about who, the clubs you represent. I, I will do that. Well, as of about 10 minutes ago, I am uh, once again the president of Niagara Falls Nature Club. Um, it was, uh, I guess, 2018, we got a call from Molly. I think she was an intern at the Greenway Commission. I'm pretty sure she was. And uh, so in her outreach, uh, telling us about this new event or resurrected event, Birds of the Niagara, she um, asked if we'd like to participate uh, from Canada. And it just seemed like a great fit. Of course, I right away called Marcy up because who else would you call for an event like this? And uh, it uh, really matched with uh, a, an initiative that Marcy had spearheaded to develop a birding tourism strategy for the Niagara region. So uh, it seemed like a great fit and uh, very happy to be co-leading with Marcy and making it happen um, You know, ever, I guess, ever since. Like, I can't believe a year ago, there we were at the Flying Bison, all crowded in, uh, raising some beers. I don't know, we had bird heads on our, our heads. It was, it was a blast. Um, so this is a little different, but it's, even the virtual has had great opportunities for us. So this, is, uh, this has been really, really neat. Anyways, here we are uh, moving along and, and uh, growing. A little bit about our clubs. The Niagara Falls Nature Club, very close to PFN in age. I think we're 55 years old this year. Um, like all, many of our organizations, we're all about promoting knowledge and understanding of the ecology of natural history. And with that understanding and that appreciation comes caring. And from caring for the land and these habitats, uh, another mission is to look at preserving and protecting the, the land. So very in line with um, the objectives for Birds on the Niagara really, knowing what's out there, understanding it, coming to love it, and then protecting it. Uh, I guess one of uh, the big features of Niagara Falls Nature Club, we do help to steward uh, property, the Harold Mitchell Nature Reserve in Wayne Fleet. And just in the last year, um, have identified Hemopoli Adelgid that's moved in. So for us in Ontario, this is absolutely brand new um, uh, to have an infestation of the size. So uh, it may affect our habitat and it might affect uh, the Niagara River and, you know, we Hope to learn from our U.S. partners as we move forward in, in dealing with that. Uh, it's been great fun to, to um, work and uh, try to build our reach here in Canada. When we started, just Marcy and I with one spot in 2019, then grew uh, to pull in Niagara Parks and the other nature clubs in 2020. Now 2021, we have seven Canadian partner groups that have been working really hard uh, to sort of our Canadian working group side of things. And uh, really, um, really proud of the reach that all of these groups have um, been able to, uh, to add to the event and the promotion and the marketing um, that's come with that. Um, so I could probably rattle on for, for ages and ages, but maybe I'll, I'll uh, wrap it up there. I'm really looking forward to the weekend and the presentations. And yeah, I wanna hear from you, Tim. So let's pass it on. Well, just before we do that, Mark, uh, Carrie, you reminded me of the Flying Bison uh, event last year. We we're all together. So I'm going to break out one of my favorite uh, and toast to last year and toast to hoping that we're together again next year. Maybe premature in this meeting to have a toast, but we can start drinking beer at some point. Uh, so anyway, that. <laughs> uh, and Tim, um, I just before you showed up, um, told everybody your books are out. Oh, okay. And, oh, they did. And the Wonderful. description um, with your signature and with uh, the Valentine's Good. Day date and the birds and agar. So they're in yeah. the auction. We'll talk about the auction again in a few minutes. But Tim, uh, we're really happy to have you here t this year. And a lot of us know who you are and what you've been doing, but you can tell us a little bit more. Sure. Well, thank you. Great, great to visit with you and and uh, hear about all the wonderful work you're doing up, up there. And it's just nice to be invited to speak. So I'm uh, down here in Virginia. Um, we're we're getting ready for a snowstorm tomorrow. <laughs> uh, 
I may be I may be feeling more like Buffalo um, tomorrow night, uh, weather wise. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You're probably getting the same storm. I'm assuming. Maybe not. But um, anyway, it's. Uh, um, I, I teach here at the University of Virginia, where I've been for uh, more than 30 years and uh, teach in a school of architecture, uh, urban and environmental planning, and uh, um, on, on the side, in a way, uh, run a, a global network of cities called Biophilic Cities. And you'll hear about that in the talk. Um, is it tomorrow? No, Saturday. When is that, uh, Jay? <laughs> I, you know better than I. Yes, it's 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 Saturday. Sa Saturday, yeah. okay. Um, and so we're actually we feel like this idea is gaining traction, and um, it's something that uh, is a really a new way of thinking about cities. Um, this idea of instead of a a city being a place that has uh, nature in it, um, parks that you have. To to walk to to visit to find the nature we're kind of reimagining the city as a natural system which it is on uh, the notion of a, a a city that's immersive that provides an immersive nature um, and uh, and so birds are for me a big part of that and um, that part of the motivation behind writing that that book which is about what wonderful cities are already doing and the things that that cities could be doing um, to make their environments safer and more hospitable uh, for birds. So I think that's kind of it. Um, Biophiliccities.org is the web page. Lots of um, material there. Uh, we do a lot of things. We have a, an online journal called Biophilic Cities that has a lot of material. We make films. Um, Jay, it would be lovely to, to figure out a way to make us a, a short film about the, all the work you all are doing in the kind of greater Niagara region. Um, we try to, with each of our partner cities, we, we uh, try to make a film or help them to make a film. And so um, a, a lot of ways that we uh, try to, to share information between the networks. It is a network, so that's essentially what it's about. Um, but it's also very much uh, an advocacy kind of mission that we're on, a kind of, you know, let's uh, make room for nature and let's understand you know, how, um, how wonderful cities could be um, with more birds and more, you know, nature. So um, that's it, pretty much. Um, more detail about it on Saturday, but, uh, but yeah. I don't know, Jay, if that's enough, but. Well, Tim, that's great. And <laughs> we're looking forward to your talk. And, and um, Tim is a, just a wonderful writer also. He's, he's uh, written about coastal resilience. Uh, he's written, you know, the biophilic city stuff um, and Bird Friendly City, which is his most recent book, which is in our auction. I'll go back to that again. And I just want to tell you, um, we're really happy to be working with you. And we know we're going to be able to do a lot together. And that idea yeah. is, is, is great. So we'll talk more about that. Well, that's great. And as we were talking, Jay, it would be wonderful if um, we could get more cities in the network from this part of the world. Uh, Carrie, the, uh, Toronto is now officially joined, so we're really excited about that. Yay. Um, and uh, we have a lot of wonderful colleagues uh, there. And uh, Edmonton is the other, the other Canadian city. Um, and I mean, they've just been, uh, we're quite big fans of what they've been doing there with wildlife passages and all the all the wonderful things they're doing, e ecological connectivity, we kind of reimagining their city as a habitat. I'm, I'm thinking um, Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Niagara Falls, Niagara yeah, USA. We get some light issues there, you might say, but you know, <laughs> uh, and, some, yeah. and some towers issues. But anyway, uh, yeah, and it. Buffalo Probably. and other, yeah, is, absolutely. Um, listen, we're uh, we're probably got about 15 more minutes in this, and I know a lot of you've been very patient. I want to get to everybody. So um, if you guys can still remain patient, um, I'd like to just uh, get to Angelina first to talk about this wonderful game, then get to Michelle, and then get to Jay Jean, Bob, and um, Bernie, and Marianne, who is one of our principal partners. So if you're, if you're all good, uh, um, nod your heads. If you got to go, let me know, um, and I'll, okay, so we're going to go with uh, Angelina. Why don't you tell us about this game, this wonderful game? 
Absolutely. So first of all, I'm Angelina. I'm with New York State Parks, specifically our Environmental Education and Interpretation Department. Um, so we work in Niagara and Erie County, 18 different state parks, as well as outreach events like the Erie County Fair, going into schools, things like that. Um, we've been working with Birds on the Niagara since its inception. Um, and this year, it's been really interesting trying to reimagine uh, what it can be in a virtual world. So we developed uh, Agents of Discovery mission specific for this event. Um, Agents, Dis uh, sorry. Agents of Discovery is a free app that you can download on either Apple or Android. Um, and then once you download it, if you live in the Buffalo area, it'll probably pop up as one of your first five um, because it's based on geography. If you're outside the area, you can be on the other side of the, the world and still play this. Um, you just have to search birds on the Niagara and the mission will pop up and it's got a bunch of challenges in there. Some of them are just about winter birding in general from this area. Some of them are ID, things looking at some that look similar and what's what. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's augmented reality. So some of it involves the world around you. Um, you can do it at your kitchen table. You can do it out in your backyard. Um, it's really, it's just a lot of fun. Um, you just open it up, click on the different map points to answer each of the challenges. So it's it was a lot of fun developing. Um, and I've got two little boys that have really enjoyed playing it uh, as they were my test subjects for it. Angelina, uh, it's a really unique game. I, I played it and it's active. Angelina is from Niagara Falls State Park. Um, and Niagara Falls State Park is the oldest state park in the United States. And uh, it's Niagara Falls, and it's a great place, and we're so happy to have them as our partners. Um, two other really big American partners, and um, you're all big partners, but I want to start with Michelle Lockett, who is from the um, Niagara Greenway Commission, and they're one of our anchors. I mean, besides Buffalo Audubon, uh, Niagara Greenway Commission is really what helped us get on the road. Uh, and then after that, I want to talk to Marianne Kedrum from the uh, Black Rock Riverside Alliance. And then Jay Jean, Bob Warren, we're going to get to you because I want to talk about the auction before we end. And Bernie, I want to talk to you too. So let's just uh, jump to uh, Michelle. Um, tell us about the Greenlight Commission. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, my name is Michelle Lockett. I am the Community Engagement Manager for Niagara River Greenway. Um, I started actually in March of this year. So kind of new still and new to birding as well. I consider myself an outdoor enthusiast. So um, that's why I joined the Greenway. I've always loved parks and outdoors. Um, I can tell you what our primary mission of the Greenway is, is to build a world-class corridor all along the Niagara River, starting from Lake, um, Lake Erie all the way up to Lake Ontario. So we're building a, a multi-use, beautiful trail system that connects all the way. That's our primary goal and, and also building up networks that lead to that trail. Um, and on top of that, um, what we're getting more focused on is um, riparian habitats and creating these great healthy habitats for birds, for pollinators, for all that, um, creating that great biodiversity. Um, and we're doing that with many different agencies, environmental agencies, many of the folks that are here in this call and others. Um, we also try to go into schools and are working on developing a youth stewardship program, getting kids involved with working in the soil, removing invasive species, planting native plants, all that kind of good stuff. So, um, yeah, I think that about covers it. I'm great, grateful to be here. Well, thank you. And like I said, you know, Greenway is our anchor. And Greenway was one of the sponsors or the prime sponsor of the Ramsar uh, wetlands of international significance or international importance. And JD is going to be talking about that in a minute. Um, Marianne Kedron, um, let's talk about the uh, Black Rock Riverside Alliance. And, and you've been such a big partner of ours since the beginning. And uh, we love that you're involved with us. You're doing great work. Tell us about yourselves. We love to be part of um, this group. It's just such a wonderful and uplifting group in the middle of winter. Um, by the way, I would like some bird identification. My birds have muffs and they have very little scarves. So if anybody likes to uh, be entertained with those. Um, the Black Rock Riverside Alliance is really an urban uh, community quality of life group. 
Uh, we're a very, very densely populated urban community that happens to have a wonderful Niagara River and a birding community right next to it. Um, and every day we get the opportunity to look out onto that river and see something different. Um, I know everybody here are like, you know, real seagull buffs, but my favorites are the tundra swans. Tundra swans have been in and they are magnificent. And who else in this community gets to just look out and see tundra swans? Amazing. Um, one of our big missions, however, is to take some of our newest immigrants in, into our community. We have a very diverse community. Um, and introduce them to what birding and what nature is in our communities. They come from very, very different parts of the world and you cannot assume that they know community and nature the way we know it. So it's a big part of our outreach um, and, and our habitat project is the other piece. Uh, we have been working very, very diligently on creating neighborhood habitats and, and integrating those habitats into the day-to-day -day lives of the people within the community. So we have um, a habitat project that is the city of Buffalo, and then we're moving into Erie County into Niagara County, and we're doing it one community garden at a time and one personal garden at a time. So an urban neighborhood garden, um, no matter how small, is still a part of this network. And that is who we are and birding is such a huge part of it as is the pollinators and the butterflies. And we are so thrilled to be part of all of you. So um, we're having a great time. You know, um, Black Rock Riverside Alliance is such an amazing community-based organization. It's doing so much good work in, in that neighborhood of Buffalo and stretching out beyond that neighborhood into other towns and cities with your Habitat Project too. So it's really great to have you with us. And like all of these groups here, you can find uh, their logo and a link to their website on our website. And so uh, check them out. Um, please feel free to donate to them or any of these groups uh, because we're all you know, doing this for um, our own pleasure and because we believe in it, but we, we accept donations. And every one of these groups, uh, for the most part, if you go to their website, you can find a way to donate to them. And so I, I encourage that. Um, I Let's see, I, Amanda just showed up. Amanda, you're, you're, you're in line. So um, we're gonna get to you in a few minutes. We get a, a few more things we need to do. Um, I'd like to introduce Jay Jean uh, now. Uh, Jay Jean Rose Burney, um, he was our keynote speaker last year. He's also um, my son, our son. Uh, so we're, you know, we're, we feel good about him. He's also one of the principal people um, that worked on the Ramsar um, designation, and he's doing a presentation uh, during our, our event with that. He's with the West New York Land Conservancy. JG, tell us about yourself and your work and your presentation. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Jay Jean. Uh, I work at the West New York Land Conservancy, which is a, a land trust on the, the U.S. side of the Niagara River. Um, I think, you know, a big part of what we're always trying to do is, 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 I guess, just help people see, you know, how important this place is. Um, you know, 200 years ago, the, the, the biodiversity of this, this area is just incredible, and it still is. You know, we've, we've done a lot over the last 200 years to sort of hurt this place, you know, dredge the wetlands and channelize the river and cut the forest. But there's so much here, and, and you know, birds are, are just one, you know, really easy way for people to, to see it, because birds are easy to find and easy to see. And and, and do that throughout the year. And so birds are one way to, to sort of show people how really incredible the Niagara region is. And a lot of the land conservancy work is to try to show people that so that we could protect it. You know, we're trying to protect what we have left and then restore what, what, we, what we've lost. You know, so we do a lot of land protection. We buy land, we have new nature preserves a lot on the Niagara River, like the Stella Niagara Preserve or the Gallagher Nature Sanctuary on Grand Island. Um, big habitat restoration projects, invasive species control, the, the Niagara Gorge. Um, we work throughout Western New York, so there's a lot of projects that are, you know, old growth forests, headwater forests, big wetlands, lots of farmland protection too. Um, but then a few years ago, we, we started trying to figure out, well, what do we, uh, how do we get the, the Niagara River nominated as a Ramsar site? And so this is a designation, an interna international designation for wetlands of global importance. And it's all about uh, changing the way people see the place that they live so that they value it, so they then protect it. 
you know, Ramsar doesn't come with protections or regulations. It's, it's really an honorary award, but it says this is one of the most important places in the world. You've, you've met criteria, you know, ecological criteria that places like the Galapagos or the Everglades have met. Um, and you are that important. This is an important place. And what you do with it is up to you, but it's important. And so we, we, with a lot of people on this call and a lot of people who aren't on the call and on, on both sides of the river, we, we started that process of trying to nominate the, the Niagara River as a Ramsar site. And uh, two years ago, the U.S. side was designated um, as the 40th Ramsar site in the U.S. And the Canadian side, um, I guess we're always sort of playing with each other who is going to go first and we compete. The U.S. side went first. Canadian side will, will, will go second. But once the Canadian side is designated, it'll be, you know, combined. Each country has to designate their own site, which is why it's sort of a, a two-site two system in this case. Um, once the Canadian site is designated, it'll be the first Ramsar site, um, a transboundary Ramsar site in North America, a Ramsar site that crosses both sides of the uh, an international border. And, you know, the Niagara River, it's got this fake line in the middle that says one side's the U.S., one side's Canada. But, you know, it's one big ecosystem. It's one big region. And having the first transboundary Ramsar site in, in Western New York and the Niagara Peninsula along the Niagara River, you know, had 200 years of a, a peaceful border. And um, it, it'd be a great way to sort of celebrate that. And what I hope is that the Canadian side, which is, you know, pretty far along in the process, is, is designated soon. Um, and, you know, once this pandemic is over, uh, we can all sort of celebrate together in the middle of the Peace Bridge that we've got this new uh, joint shared Ramsar site designation that says we are one of the most important places in the world. So that's the goal. Well, thanks, J. Jean. Uh, you've done great work, and I, you know, we all know that. Not, I'm not just saying that because I'm your dad, but you know, you've done great work. Hello, Bond 21 partners and guests. My name is Carrie Royer, Community Outreach and Volunteer Coordinator at the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority. On behalf of the NPCA, I welcome you to this exciting virtual celebration of winter birds and thank you for your interest in birding and conservation. The NPCA is a community-based natural resource management agency that works to protect, enhance, and sustain healthy watersheds. With 60 years of experience, we offer watershed programs and services that focus on flood and hazard management, drinking water protection, education, species protection, ecosystem restoration, community stewardship, and land management. We are one of 36 conservation authorities in Canada's beautiful province of Ontario and manage 41 conservation areas within the Niagara Peninsula watershed, held in public trust for recreation, heritage preservation, conservation, and education. We hope you will enjoy this weekend's inspirational series of speakers and presentations and encourage you to apply what you've learned as you head out to explore NPCA conservation areas or any wild spaces near you, home to a great variety of wildlife and beautiful birds. Uh, so here's how I'd like to do this. We probably can go another 10 minutes or so. Um, I would like to end with the auction again, Lauren, if you're good with that, but I still have a couple of other speakers I want to introduce. Bob, I'm going to introduce you just before the auction because you're in the auction. So uh, I, I think who's left here is, um, you know, um, Bernie um, and then uh, Bob. Um, and then, oh, Amanda, I can't, I'm sorry, you came late, I forgot, but we'll, we'll, we'll do you two before we go to the auction. So Amanda, maybe right after um, Bernie, you can tell us about your IVA work. She's the uh, Canadian IVA coordinator for Birds Canada. But Bernie Clabeau, um, tell us about uh, Western Europe wildlife rehabilitation. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, thanks, first of all, thanks for um, having me. I know it's kind of last minute here, so I appreciate, you know, um, being able to just be here and meet everyone. It's really amazing to see this many great people um, here. Uh, but I run, so I'm Bernie Clabeau. I run uh, Western York Raptor and Wildlife Care, which is a nonprofit dedicated to rehabilitation of injured wildlife, particularly raptors. So hawks, owls, falcons, things like that. Um, we meet people halfway. We, we, we constantly get calls to, to help with these uh, injured animals and we help rescue them and have a number of collaborations with um, Cornell and uh, SUNY at Buffalo research projects and things like this. Uh, but we also do environmental education and again, research, which is really 
amazing and it's a good way to get our students involved um, at Medi College. So I teach at Medi Biology. Um, I'm a full-time biology professor there. So we get our students involved in the rehabilitation and research side of it. Uh, we also have an ornithology course, which is why, you know, this all kind of is related. Um, the ornithology lab, we're always looking for different organizations to get our students out in the field and uh, just, just getting them on new adventures and making new connections in the community and helping them become good stewards of the earth. So that's kind of the, the goal there, you know, to, to introduce Western New York Raptor and then also on the student um, aspect to get them involved um, in stewardship. So, so really cool to be here. Thanks for uh, letting me introduce myself and nice to, nice to see you guys. I know some of you, so nice to see you again. Angelina, I know, I know you. <laughs> she, she actually presented to some of our students um, a couple months ago. So that was great. You did a great job. Uh, for, for them. They really enjoyed it. So thanks again, Jay. Thank you, Bernie. I'm glad you caught up with us in the last couple of days. We, we, we know you were part of us last year. And, and so thanks for chasing us down and coming here tonight. Um, again, you can go to their website through our website. Uh, they also take donations. They, they can always use financial help. So, um, so Bernie, you're doing great work and glad to hear about the Canisius uh, bird courses also. Um, I want to talk to Amanda right now. Uh, Amanda, again, with Birds Canada, uh, IBA. She's doing a great program on the, on the Canadian perspective on the IBA. Um, she's also got a great office um, near um, uh, Point Pele. Um, and it's, it's, no, not Point Pele. You tell us where you're at. Long Point. Oh, Long Point, of course. Yep. So that's our uh, nemesis. <laughs> Just kidding. We're jealous. <laughs> okay, so tell um, us you're, you're, yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying to be kind of quiet because I just put my toddler to bed. So can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Amanda Beekle from uh, Birds Canada, and I run the Important Bird and Biodiversity Area Program in Ontario. I also do some national work uh, as well, but mostly um, I focus on Ontario. Um, yeah, so Birds Canada is a, a national non-for-profit, non-governmental charity. Um, devoted to saving wild birds and conserving habitat. And it's the biggest um, bird organization in Canada to do that. Um, it's great to work for. And like Jay said, we have an awesome office down in Long Point. So when the pandemic is over, over, I don't know what that means, but um, come visit us. Uh, it's There's trails and good birding. Um, so with the IBA program, um, specifically in Niagara, I'm working on more of the engagement side of things. So trying to get people, um, volunteers uh, involved in um, advocating for the Niagara River Corridor IBA, um, holding events, and um, also I help doing some um, of the wrap work as well. Um, there's so many great volunteers already that it was, you know, it's kind of easy work because there's so many passionate people already devoted to so many great conservation efforts. So it's a really awesome um, place to work in. And I've met some really great people through uh, working with the volunteers there. So, um, yeah, well, about all I have. <laughs> thanks. You know, we're looking forward to your presentation. Um, it's about the IBA. And it's also, You've seen it. <laughs> it's all well. Shh. <laughs> it's also um, about a bird's eye point of view. It's kind of fun to think about uh, going down the river as a bird. I, I, I know that you use a Bonaparte skull as the example, um, but it's a great presentation. So uh, check out Amanda's uh, event uh, presentation. Uh, so um, we're getting down to um, the final uh, little stuff here before we go to our auction. Uh, Bob Warren uh, is from Buffalo State. And he works with the Arboretum there, and he's a, a good friend. And uh, this book, which he has recently been the author of, is on our auction. And uh, tell, you can tell us about yourself in that book, maybe, Robert. You've been very patient. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, if I didn't hear anything else about Tim Beatley, I could tell he was faculty because he couldn't remember when he was speaking. <laughs> it's such a faculty thing. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, I'm glad to be here. I think, you know, currently we're in such a, a um, 
a fact challenge landscape, I need to have full disclosure that I'm probably the worst birder in the world. I can't recognize the songs. I don't see very well and I hate binoculars. And so, cause they put marks on my glasses. So I love to hang out with birders and they can help, but I am absolutely horrible at birding. And so um, I guess that's why I have to do trees cause they don't move. They just sit there, you know, I can take off my glasses and look closely. Um, anyway, so I'm a faculty at Buffalo State. About five years ago, some folks at Buffalo State wanted to reinvigorate the campus arboretum, which um, has a long history. Lady Bird Johnson actually planted one of the trees on campus. And so they asked me to be involved, which I was very reluctant to do. They wanted to get a bunch of exotics and try and do your traditional arboretum. And so I just, every time we had a meeting, just kind of quietly said, well, what about natives? Here's the advantage of natives. And after about four years, they listened. And so um, now the arboretum is 100% native trees, uh, which is even actually higher than I advocated for. I advocated for 75%. And so we got this big donation and, and Sue McCartney came and said, well, let's do an urban tree guidebook. And I, I said, Sue, you know, I love guidebooks. I'm a nerd, but there are a ton of guidebooks and they're all boring. So how do we do something that would actually engage non-nerds? And so we had had um, the year before students in our art program, which is actually pretty impressive they did sort of their impressionistic view of trees. And we were so enthralled with one of them that we made postcards out of them. So we decided instead of a guidebook, let's do more of an, an art book or an impressionist view and kind of sneak in the native tree thing. And so we got this student and we got, we, we started to put this book together. And, and one of the funniest things well, again, for us was that she went to the herbarium, she started looking up the tree, she was trying to get it exact. So when we first met, she was ready to be a biologist. And I was like, no, 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 impression. You know, this should have feeling, nothing that you could actually identify the tree with. And so in the end, uh, this book, and as, if you were to open it up, you'll see, None of the trees, these aren't photos, they're actually art. And the fun part of it though, to sneak in the science, we find the page, and this is based on, on data. Um, each tree, you can see it, gets a caterpillar rating and an acorn rating. The caterpillar is it's, it, how many Lepidoptera species it, it hosts, and the acorns are, are uh, forage. For, so it's, it's really connected to birds because in terms of, you know, Lepidoptera, 95% um, of birds, no matter what they eat as adults, feed their young Lepidoptera. It's, it's the key food for birds. And then of course, uh, more direct food is forage. And so, um, yeah, so we put together the book with this idea of surreptitiously working on folks to plant native trees in urban areas rather than go to the box store and buy exotics. So, Jay, how's that? Anything else? No, that's really good. I, and it's a great book. And, um, you know, I want to say that you do know a lot about birds and um, you may not be a bird nerd, but you know a lot about trees, you know a lot about plants, you know a lot about insects, you know a lot about ants. Yeah, I do know the ants. Yeah, he's a big ant guy, so he's done a lot of research. In fact, um, some of the research he's done has pointed out that Tiff Nature Preserve and Times Beach and other places are really infested with um, a, a species of red ant. Um, and so it's one one individual, basically. It's a clonal quality, but there, what, it might be a billion individuals? Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's the Borg, right? It's, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's amazing research and it's really part of what we have to know about because they're not necessarily friendly to our environment. Uh, but with that, um, we invite you to uh, look at the book, look at the auction. There's a, a link to the Arboretum on our website. 
uh, you can go there and donate too. Um, I believe if you buy membership, you might actually get a book, uh, but you should get from us first. Um, so I want to go back to the auction, Lauren, if you want to uh, you know, take us through what's going on there. And then I'm thinking we'll come back and if you'd like, maybe spend five minutes and just have a little conversation. Um, so let's do some auction stuff. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everybody. In case you didn't catch before, I'm Lauren Makienko, the Director of Education at Buffalo Audubon Society. And the birds on the Niagara auction this year has some really great items to bid on, a lot of which include the people you just met during this intro um, meeting. So the birds on the Niagara. One thing I'm not sure, if I switch screens, can you see different things? Yes. Okay, great. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so this is the landing page for the auction. And if you, if for some reason there is nothing on this page you want to bid on, you can actually make a donation to Birds on the Niagara. So that's right at the top of the page where you can click right here where it says making a donation here. And that will still help our efforts if you're not into um, any of the items that we have this year in the auction. Um, so some of the great things we have, you got, you just met Marcy and she is leading a walk in Canada, you guys. I mean, like a personal walk for a group of people. So you can bid on this if you're one of the Canadian participants in this event or visit our, our um, auction page. You can also bid on birding with Jay Jean. I mean, come on, right? You get to bird with Jay Jean. He'll take you to one of the Western New York Land Conservancy sites. That is not an opportunity that anybody can take advantage of. I'll prowl for four with Tom Kerr of Buffalo Audubon. You just met Tom, my amazing coworker. You're gonna see the virtual owl prowl, but if you're totally jazzed by that on Friday night, you can bid and go birding with Tom at night. Um, this is one of my favorites, New York Wait, Niagara, Parks. <laughs> Niagara Parks in Canada. This, these booklet, attraction pass booklets for two, give you two people admission to all these places. Journey Behind the Falls, Niagara's Fury, Whirlpool Aero Car, the White Water Walk, Butterfly Conservatory, Floral Show House, the Laura Secord Homestead, McFarland House, Old Fort Erie, the Mackenzie Printery Museum, and you get free transportation between those locations. Seriously, an amazing, um, an amazing thing to bid on. A value at almost $300 for those two booklets, and you can get those for a steal if you're uh, one of those people to get in there and bid. If you're not a birder, but you're into fly fishing, our executive director, Ed, can take you out on a half day fly fishing excursion with Alberto Ray um, from Orvis. So, well known Orvis fly fisherman who leads um, fly fishing tours. They'll provide all the stuff and lunch. They threw in lunch with this one. Um, Tim, your bird, your book was right there on there for everybody. After we participate, I have a feeling the bids are going to go up on these books because I can't wait to hear your presentation on Saturday. Uh, in case you're not familiar with Alec, Alec Human is a well-known birder in Western New York. He's actually a published co-author for one of the chapters in the Sibley's Guide to Bird Behavior. Um, really astute um, birder super personable and this is not an option that's available to most people. I can't even get them to go birding with me and I've known Alec for 20 years. So uh, you can bird on that. I might I might bid on that just to get them to go birding with me and uh, get out there and bird with Alec. Um, other things, more books. We have cool stuff. If you have a cabin or something, these snowshoes are super cool. This Buffalo Audubon swag basket has so much stuff in it. We've got bird guides and games and, you know, lots of merch from Buffalo Audubon. So if that's of interest to you, but on that games, Wingspan, who has played Wingspan in this group? If you haven't, you're going to love it. It's an amazing game donated by Heart of the Game again in South Buffalo. It's a beautiful game all about birding, super fun to play. Tom can attest to that with our campers and his own kids. Um, I could go on and on and on, but time is up. So bid high. You don't have to bid often. Just put in your maximum bid and watch, watch your winnings come in. We really appreciate everybody's um, 
support of Birds on the Niagara. We're super excited to be part of it. Thanks. Well, thanks. And <clears throat> you can see, uh, get to that um, auction on our websites, on our homepage. So you can go there right now. I think down below <laughs> us, you're going to see the website, uh, www.birdsontheniagara.org. So um, I think that we can start thinking about wrapping this up, but Marianne, I see your hand up and I'd like to have a little conversation with everyone. So what's up? How long is the auction up, um, Jay? I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, Lauren. Yeah, uh, the auction ends. So it's a two week time frame. It opened this past Sunday, a week before the event, and it closes at 8 p.m. the following Sunday after the event, which is February 21st. Hey, Carrie, congratulations, by the way, for being elected president. What are you going to, you told us what you're going to do, right? Uh, how do you mean, sorry, Jay? And, and what are you going to do with that? You, you told us what you're going to do with that, but we're looking forward to, uh, to helping you. Yes, it's going to be a, a busy year. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get lots of people out and engage and, and get people back outside. We're so looking forward to figuring out how we're going to get back outdoors, you know, small events. And, you know, when this Birds on the Niagara ends, we're going to get our lens focused on 2022 and figure out what's possible. Well, that's cool. And we're looking forward to your coming back as one of the leaders of uh, Birds of the Niagara 2022. Um, Before I go, shout out for Wingspan. We've played 35 nights in a row. Wow. <laughs> hey, Marcy, I don't want to spring anything on you, but we have a new speaker that we just pulled together the last couple of days. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Molly? Oh, I'm so glad she was able to come in at the last moment. Mo Molly Brown, uh, I saw her speak, we, uh, Jay and Tom and I um, and Ed spoke at the uh, Space Coast uh, Birding Festival in Florida last weekend. And uh, we got a uh, pass to see some of the speakers. And so I saw Molly's name and she was talking about being a non-male birder. Well, fit the category. And uh, so I made a point of watching her talk and I was overwhelmed uh, because, uh, I shared so many similar experiences with her, uh, things that I hadn't been really able to verbalize, uh, what it's like to be birding as a female birder and, and often alone. So, um, so it was very compelling and she's a great speaker. She speaks from the heart and I'm really looking forward to hearing her speak again. So thanks. I'm for really looking forward to hearing that too. Yeah. I'm it, so glad you guys asked her. Good job. Yeah, she's really wonderful, yeah. She really is. And, you know, we have social justice as part of our theme. We're starting our keynote is Drew Lanham, and he talks about being an African-American and the African-American experience as a birder and as a conservation uh, advocate. And then uh, we have Molly. And so we're kind of bookending. Uh, Molly is going to be our last, um, last presentation this weekend during the festival. We we're going to have a wrap up event as our last event, but we're going to put that off for a week or so as we all go through and digest what all of our programming is. But Molly is gonna be um, a really big messenger. Uh, and so you'll see her at the end of the day on Sunday. So what else, what else can we talk about? I got more beer, you know, we got a few more minutes. <laughs> I can well, talk about- I didn't know we were the... supposed to bring oh. beer. Well, I, 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 <laughs> no. I just was thinking about what Carrie said about what we were doing last year, and I went to the refrigerator and grabbed some. <laughs> this is, I have to say, I'm drinking a beer from my son-in-law's brewery in Stratford, and he won some awards. So everybody go to the job site. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Who knows, maybe from this event, some people watching, individuals in the area might want to, you know, engage and support uh, the organization of Birds on the Niagara moving forward. So, uh, yes, definitely welcome, uh, reach out, you know, people can connect with any of our groups to, to hook up and, and connect with organizing and planning moving forward. We want this to grow. You know, we've gotten such good publicity and such a lot of it, and not in small amount due to the fact that you Canadians have been doing a lot of social media marketing, but we have people from all over the world that are looking at us and talking to us. And we really have a connection. 
I mean, our migrating birds, we talk about this a lot, but some of the birds that are here in the wintertime, you know, the ducks on the, uh, the river, um, the owls, sometimes we see snowy owls, these are Arctic species. We have gulls that come here from the boreal forests on the coasts, either in the north or on the west coast. We're connected all the way to the Arctic, literally, with these birds. Same birds there that come here that depend on the Niagara River corridor. And so when we protect them here, we're protecting those areas. We're protecting the Arctic. It goes the other way too. In the summertime, we have nesting neotropical birds. Uh, so many um, warblers and some of our swallow species. And they're here making babies in the summertime. And those babies go back. Where do they go? Some of them go all the way to the Amazon basin and winter there. And so when we're doing conservation work here, we're also doing work that relates to the Amazon and everywhere in between, Central America, Mexico, the Caribbean. Our work here is really important. These birds depend on us. That's why we're a globally significant, important bird area. And so we have a big responsibility and we have great opportunities. And people like Tim Beatley uh, is gonna help us figure out what biophilic cities mean. We have a presentation from Fatal Light Awareness Program, which is a Toronto group that talks about bird safe cities through lighting and glass, just like Tim does. So we can learn, we can advocate, and we can build a better community. And it's gonna be centered, I think, around the work that we do in this festival and the work that we do the rest of the year. So I wanna thank all of you for being here. And if okay. anybody else, want, yeah, somebody else wanna say something? I just wanna say, I want you to be the featured species, uh, speaker for making bird babies in Buffalo next year. Hey, you know, this is a Valentine's Day event that we're having this year. And so the reason is because there's courtship going on in the river. Not only are the birds beautiful, but they're courting. And they may be making babies now, but they're getting close to it. So it's Valentine's Day. And one of the things we talk about is let's bring some romance to birding. And yeah, so uh, go with your loved ones and hang on and watch these romantic birds. And, uh, you know, do what people do. Making bird babies in Buffalo. I love it. <laughs> Sex in the city. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, listen, um, I really appreciate everyone coming here. And uh, it, it's a great Friday night. It's a great Valentine's Day weekend coming up. Everyone that's watching, go to the auction. Stay tuned to our schedule. You can see our schedule as it's presented. And it'll be archived. So you can go to our Friday night schedules on Saturday or next month. Same with Saturday and Sunday you'll always be able to see our wonderful programs. We hope you join us during the weekend, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long weekend. Thank you and um, see you at the festival. Bye everyone. At the festival. Bye. Bye everyone. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.